These vegetables I'm having with my meal probably wouldn't have existed nine years ago. These are vegetables grown right here in Singapore. Today, these greens make up 12% of leafy vegetables in the market. By 2030, we are targeting to have 30% of Singapore's nutritional needs produced locally. And this includes leafy vegetables. So in this episode of Talking Point, I want to find out how our Singapore vegetables stack up against their imported counterparts. In terms of nutrition and freshness, is made in Singapore better? But first, do you have a preference, madam, when you go to the market where your vegetables are from? I want to know what people go for when choosing vegetables to buy. Of course, uh, fresh, cheap. I mean, the price must be reasonable. Right? Uh, price, uh, of course, uh, definitely. Uh. Price seems to be an overriding factor. The thing is, locally grown vegetables are generally more expensive. When it comes to spinach, for example, locally grown ones cost about 70 Singapore cents per 100 grams. Compare this to imported spinach from which can go for as low as 54 cents for the same amount. Chai sim from Singapore costs about 67 cents per 100 grams, while you can get imported chai sim for just 53 cents per 100 grams. Overall, our checks show imported vegetables are on average 33% cheaper than local vegetables. I want to know why our homegrown veggies cost so much more compared to the ones that are either trucked or flown over. Food security expert Paul Ting has been tracking the prices of local vegetables for over 12 years. This is a very good example of the modern indoor vegetable farm that we're seeing in Singapore now. A vertical farm that produces more for the same unit of space. Now, just like building a three-storey home, you know, how do you maximise your plot area? You go upwards, <laughs> right? So the same thing with these layers here. What I don't understand is when we import vegetables, mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. when we fly them in, for example, right. how is it that all that still makes them cheaper than our own vegetables? Okay. The cost of production of a unit of produce is so much lower in Vietnam, Malaysia and China. So when you look at the entire cost makeup, you know, the cost of shipping is just one part of it. And obviously, if your cost of producing the produce in bulk is very low, then the ship in bulk you know, means that your transport cost per kilo of vegetable actually is lower yeah, than if you were to even ship it locally, where you don't produce so much at all. Countries like Malaysia, Vietnam, you know, and China, because the cost of labour is, is a fraction of what we pay in Singapore. Second, it's the same cost for all farms, is that Singapore does not produce you know, the input we need, seed, fertilisers and so on. You know, we have to import everything. Okay. So inevitably, that drives up the cost and then labour as well. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of work going on around in, in these farms to, to have robotics, to, to try and make sure that, that the labour demand is not so high, you know. But inevitably, it's the cost of production that accounts for the price premium that, that we put on local vegetables. So that adds all the cost. So every single element uh, in the production chain actually adds on to the eventual cost of what we consumers pay for. It, it definitely. While local greens may not be a match in price, I wonder if they can match up in terms of nutrition and freshness. I want to put this to the test. So I'm buying spinach, taisin, kailan and bak choy from supermarkets across Singapore. Vegetable sellers tell me these are some of our favourite leafy greens. I've bought nearly 30 samples of both local and imported veggies from Malaysia and China, our top two source countries for green leafy vegetables. Because the vegetables I've chosen are supposed to be rich in dietary fibre, vitamin B9, calcium and potassium, I'm going to be focusing my test on these nutrients. The tests will take two weeks. Meantime, I'm doing my own experiment, testing the vegetables to see how long they can stay fresh for. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, you should smell this. Singapore gets its leafy vegetables from a variety of countries. But most of it, 64%, comes from Malaysia, followed by China, which accounts for 22%. Because of the distance the imported vegetables need to cover, they could reach our wet markets and supermarkets up to seven days after being harvested. Locally grown vegetables, on the other hand, can reach our supermarket shelves within the same day of harvesting. So I am assuming that local vegetables would trump their imported counterparts when it comes to how long they can last. To put that to the test, I'm going to be leaving these Singapore-grown bok choy, spinach, gailan and chai sim, as well as their Malaysian and China varieties, out in the open for three days to see what happens to them. While we wait for the results, I am heading back to the laboratory where I had earlier sent nearly 30 samples of vegetables to. I want to find out how our local veggies stack up against their imported counterparts in terms of nutrition. The vegetables were tested for dietary fibre, vitamin B9, potassium and calcium. So for dietary fibre, you can see that uh, local vegetables are about 21% lower than the imported ones. What are the reasons? The imported vegetables are grown longer, they become older, then they become more fibrous. Vegetables grown in traditional farms overseas are usually harvested after five to six weeks in order to make them more fibrous. Because the more fibre they contain, the lower the nutrient loss that can occur during their journey to Singapore. Local farms, on the other hand, tend to harvest vegetables earlier, around three to four week mark, so that they'll be tastier. Generally, the local vegetables, potassium is 20% higher and calcium is about 30% higher. So the local vegetables perform better than the imported ones. And for the vitamin, B9, the local vegetables, it's about 2% higher than the imported ones. So can I say that overall, at least for the vitamins as well as the minerals, the local vegetables are performing better? Yes, yes, you can say that. So it seems our local vegetables didn't fare too badly compared to the imported varieties. What I really want to know next is how significant are these nutritional numbers? I've sent the results to Dr. Manda Gorge. He's not just a scientist, but has been developing urban farming technologies at Tomasek Polytechnic for 10 years. When I saw the results, it was a 20% difference in dietary fibre. Is that significant? In terms of implications on the consumer nutrition, the local produce gives us the new dietary fibres that are needed in the local consumer's diet. We definitely are not impacted by that 20% difference. Whether it's 3.6 grams of dietary fibre from imported vegetables or 2.8 grams in local vegetables, the difference isn't significant. They only make up a quarter of our dietary fibre needs. Our daily needs are also met by our intake of other foods like fruits, nuts and oats. So conversely, Singapore vegetables, we seem to have done better in the vitamins as well as yes, the minerals. Definitely. So is that also insignificant? If you're looking at the vitamins and the minerals, if you're looking at a drop of even say 15 to 30% of nutritional value of these crops, I think it would be a significant impact it would have on consumer health mm. if we look at the long-term implications. We need to look at these leafy vegetables from the overseas countries that after harvest, what is the nutritional degradation that takes place in these leafy vegetables? And by the time it reaches the consumer, how much losses in the nutrients has happened? Now, if you want to overcome this nutritional loss, it is a very obvious choice. We should be looking at local produce where in the morning the crops are harvested and afternoon these crops are in your kitchen. 
So the nutritional degradation that you're looking at for these crops is significantly lower. So what I'm hearing is the journey from farm to table matters. It does matter a lot. What you're looking at is during the packaging, storage and transport, these harvested vegetables can be subjected to heat, can be subjected to temperature, can be subjected to oxygen and other factors as well. Now when these harvested veggies are subjected to all these environmental parameters, there is obviously a nutritional degradation that happens because of the biochemical reactions. Take an example of vitamin C. FAO has actually looked at the data and mentioned that almost 15% to 77%, that's the range that they're looking at for degradation of only vitamin C from harvest to the consumer table. If the veggies are harvested in the morning, afternoon we are having them on our tables. Now what does that mean? That means you're getting the desired freshness, the desired taste, and the desired nutritional density. Over and above that, Singapore Food Agency has very strict regulations on how these veggies need to be grown in Singapore. One thing that you can be assured of is that whatever veggies they are having in their plate from the local produce are free of pesticides, free of chemicals, and definitely higher nutritional density. Is there anything the consumer can do to help to bring the price down? Right now, if you look at the local uh, supermarket stores, you find a big section of overseas grown leafy vegetables there and a smaller section for locally produced vegetables. Now, if the consumer starts consuming more of the local produce, the demand would increase. That would put a pressure on the farms to produce more. When the farms are producing more, definitely the cost of production would scale down based on the scale up of production size. And that would definitely help bring the cost down to a certain extent. Local vegetables take only one day to get from farm to our tables, so there is less loss of nutritional content. Which leaves me one last thing to look into. My perishability test. Do our local greens stay fresh for longer? Oh, oh. They actually stink. It's been three days since I left all the vegetables outside and from the looks of it, um, the imported ones are looking more yellow and also more wilted. I am bringing the rotting veggies to dietitian Lo Wini. She's going to help me examine my rotting veggies and explain why the locally grown ones seem to hold up better in terms of perishability. So this is the imported chai sim as compared to, uh, let's take this one, which is the local chai sim, right? So clearly the local chai sim still has a bit of green left as compared to the imported one. Does this mean that the local chai sim is fresher after three days? The imported one, they will spend some time during the transport, but the local one, the duration of transportation is not that long. That's why it can last better. Let me ask you, it may have lost its colour, but does it mean that some nutrition value is lost as well? The vitamin that has been lost would be uh, mainly the vitamin C. They are very sensitive to air, uh, to heat and so on. So vitamin C as well as phytochemicals, which can act as antioxidants to prevent um, heart diseases and cancer. Next, I want to talk about the spinach, which looks really, really bad. Oh my Ew. gosh, Ew. Look at, uh, you should smell this. When you look at it, right, this one is slimy and it's limp. So it doesn't stand very well like the local spinach. This one actually is not too bad. Mm. It's still quite fresh, it's not too yellow, but probably there are some loose uh, pieces with like browning effect as well. Yeah, so this part probably the loss of vitamins and the hydration. But this is still looking good. But most important is probably at this condition, uh, they might have some microbes or bacteria in it. I don't recommend people to eat it. So even though local vegetables cost more, the question is, are they worth the money? The answer seems to be yes, because generally they are nutritionally more dense and stay fresh longer compared to the imported ones. 
I want Singaporeans to know what they are paying for when they pay more for local vegetables. These vegetables all we just took out when we set up this morning. Oh, okay. Okay. And on the left hand side are all local vegetables. Oh, looks so much better. So do you think it is worth paying a bit more for local vegetables? Singapore's leafy greens are packaged differently to stand out from the competition. Each packet vegetable would have this symbol. But local vegetables do come at a higher price, which could be a deterrent for price-conscious consumers. So, I want to bring the benefits of our Made in Singapore greens to everyone. So if you can step forward, I'm going to show you. These are just vegetables from this morning, okay? okay. This is Singapore, Malaysia, Singapore, imported from China. Okay. You know that there's a price difference. But we did an experiment and we realised that when we put the vegetables out, the imported ones tend to become less fresh more quickly than the local ones. This is what happened to the imported ones. It's all become like gooey and this one is all yellow. And the Singapore ones are not too bad. So that's after three days. Now knowing this, will you change your mind about what vegetables to buy? It, it depends on how often you cook. Let's say I were to cook on the same day, uh, it doesn't matter if I were to get uh, an, an imported one. Or you just get it from the supermarket and then straight away go back home and cook. These vegetables, all we just took out when we set up this morning. Oh, okay. Okay. And on the left hand side are all local vegetables. Oh, looks so much better. So, do you think it is worth paying a bit more for local vegetables? I mean, if these are sort of prices, I can still accept. This one I must thumbs three a bit because ah. this is uh, 100 grams. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, so, see. 100 grams, if we are talking about times three, it will be about $1 difference, okay, uh, one packet. Okay. Still, probably, I mean, if you're looking at the quality, yes. Mm. Will you put everything aside and say, no, I must support local because I just trust that they are produced better. Will you do that? To be truthful, may not be to the extent. Uh. Okay. Let's put okay. It. Uh, yes, I want to support local, but mm. it must be reasonable. Okay. I mean, now costs are really going up. So price remains a critical factor for many people when they buy their vegetables. But when they found out about the benefits of locally grown vegetables, many were swayed to choose local. But let's face it, price matters, especially with inflation creeping up. I wonder what else can be done to make local vegetables more attractive. I may have found a company that does just that. Lim Jia Hui has been growing vegetables in this indoor farm for over three years. But I hear there is something a little different about his leafy greens. So what we do here is we design our crop cycle, our crop recipe. You said crop recipe. Yes. What does that mean? So like cooking, we have recipe where you know add salt, add pepper. So very similar to crop recipe. Now the technology allows us to control down to climate, lighting, nutrient, etc. So it's as if you're tweaking all these parameters. Okay, take me through what you have right. and exactly what you have manipulated for these vegetables. Okay. So we start with something simple like the lettuce over here. Shall we? Yeah. Mm, it's slightly bitterish. Mm. What's so special about this one? Yeah. So this is an interesting case where um, it's really about the nutritional profile. So like human skin, when we expose sun, we get tan, you know, we get melanin. Similarly, in this case, they produce some kind of the red colour thing we see. Mm. It's uh, some kind of flavonoids. So it's just to protect the, the plants from UV damage from the sun or from too much light. We know it's very nutritional to human beings because this is anti-inflammation, it's rich antioxidants. The good stuff. Yes, the good stuff. Okay, right. so what you've done is actually to uh, control the conditions so that mm. the plant produces more of the red pigment, yes. uh, which carries a different nutritional value compared yes. to the other coloured pigments. Yes. Okay, now what's next? Alright, finally we have this green harmless leaf mm -hmm. we call mustard. The colour is so beautiful, I'm going to eat it. Wow. So mustard you don't normally get in Singapore. We know that some consumers really like the, the wasabi cake. Mm. 
So we decided to grow this, um, to stress the plant to produce more. In nature, wasabi uh, producing classes of vegetable like mustard, they produce this compound to deter herbivores from eating them. So now that I eat one bite, I'm not going to bite it again. That's how they protect themselves. So when we stress them, make them think that they're under attack, they'll produce more of this. That's how you get the strong flavour. I can wasabi. imagine that there will be people who will love this. What have you manipulated exactly to make it even spicier than normal? Two factors I would say. One is we reduce the, the growth rate. So normally when uh, it grows too quickly, uh, your compound is all spread over. So it's like a nutrient density. Now the spiciness density decreases. The second one is we did something to, uh, to the nutrient solution. We starve it a certain way. That makes it think that, oh, things are not right. I need to protect myself. Then they produce more of this compound. That... All these sound really good, but at what price? How much more expensive are they compared to the salad greens that I can get outside? So currently, you can buy about a, a box of 20 grams at about 4 50 20 grams is very little. It sounds very little, yeah. but actually you get quite a few pieces of leaf in one so box. So about 7 leaves then? Yeah. So for lettuces, we are now selling them at about $2 per 100 gram. So it's a head around there, so it can feed two people. So I think that is about 10 to 20% still more expensive compared to the imported produce from China and Malaysia. How scalable is your operation? The major cost I would say here is in R&D. Once the R&D is done, you have the crop recipe, you know what machines to use. It's all about just multiplying this in with technology or just with a larger factory. So in a way, I would say it's very scalable. I must admit that when I started this journey, I thought that local vegetables were slightly overpriced. But I've learned that there is actually a lot of innovation going on in this sector to improve the nutrition, taste and even freshness of local vegetables. So moving forward, I will continue to support local farmers whenever I can. Hello, you're packing this for me? Nice. I also want this one. Thank you. Thank you. And here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.